The broad topic uh, anemia begins here with laying down the foundation. A lot to discuss, but uh, we'll take it step by step. First, anemia. Who's your patient? Feeling fatigued and tired. Why is that? Well, for the most part, it's because of decreased hemoglobin. That should be your focus here in the first bullet point. Hemoglobin, by definition, when decreased, automatically puts you in the realm of anemia. Along with this, oftentimes you will find decrease in total number of RBCs, even though that is not a guarantee, and the circulating RBC mass is usually decreased as well. Once again, by definition, anemia means decreased hemoglobin, which then means to you that you're not able to properly then deliver oxygen to your tissues, which are now starving and hungry, and so therefore tired. In addition, oftentimes with hemoglobin, you find that the hematocrit will be decreased as well. Hematocrit, you want to think of approximately being 40%, and uh, if you find something much below 33 and such, you know your patient is in the realm of anemia most likely. Next, now as we go through the um, synthesis or the development of an RBC, it's important that you keep a few things in mind conceptually. When you think about an RBC being uh, generated, it begins in the bone marrow, as you should know. When you begin in the bone marrow, you should be thinking about the uh, hematopoiesis, or specifically under hematopoiesis, it would be erythropoiesis, wouldn't it? So in your head, you're thinking about uh, what lineage, if you're thinking about the uh, bone marrow for RBCs. The lineage here would be, in fact, your myeloid, wouldn't it? So at some point, when we go on to talk about more of your RBC pathology, We'll talk about more about these myeloid issues. I hope that's clear. All cells from your uh, hematopoietic stem cell uh, that are dealing with myeloid, well, for the most part, it'll be all cells. What are they? RBCs. You also have your platelets, but those are different types of uh, signaling pathways. And then you have your uh, granulocytes, and by that we mean, of course, our uh, neutrophils and eosinophils and basophils. And uh, that's about it, really, in, in, in general and of course macrophages as well, but then you get into your non-myeloid, and that'll be your lymphocytes. hope that's clear. That's the picture that I'd like for you to have in your head uh, prior to uh, moving forward here. Anemia, as we'll classify this, and we will uh, simply classify this, but I'm, th I'm then going to put in more details for you, not to worry. And uh, we'll begin our discussion at some point with microcytic anemia. And what that basically means is the parameter that you're going to use here is called MCV, which stands for mean corpuscular volume. Once again, MCV stands for mean corpuscular volume, and that is what you should be looking for in interpretation of your labs uh, when you get them, and you find that your MCV is less than 80, but before we go there, understand what normal is. Normal is between uh, 80 to 99, and I am being specific there, and the reason for that is because once you start getting above 100, obviously that's going to put you in the category of macrocytic, okay? So I am going to be a little bit more technical, but... Uh, you know, for the most part, as far as your hematologist is concerned, if you follow less than 80, you'll be fine. It's microcytic. If it's be bef between 80 and 100, it'll be called normocytic. And then if it's greater than 100, then you're thinking about macrocytic. Okay? And that's the, uh, that's the classification. That's a lab that you want to pay attention to. Uh, as we move through uh, some of these specific anemias, then I'm going to add in more of our parameters, inclu including... Uh, red blood cell distribution width, I also put in here mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, and of course, the RBC count and such. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.